Hi guys. So Louis Farou is famous for a kind of mix of serious journalism with kind of um, a bit of humour and um, yeah, kind of a cross between I don't know serious investigative journalism of of uh, quite serious real issues and also um, at times, especially with shows like Weird Weekends and the When Louis Met series, like. Um, kind of taking like a laid back humorous approach and kind of making fun of things and uh he's made some amazing stuff over the years i think like you know some of the best uh documentaries on tv i think his work has gone way downhill in recent years and i think a lot of people who watch him probably feel the same way um the obvious thing to point to is savile obviously he did this show about jimmy savile and I don't know what people thought of it at the time, but after it came out that Savile was basically the biggest, most monstrous paedophile of all time, a lot of people looked to Louis to ask, you know, why he didn't kind of dig deeper, how he didn't um, draw this out. And I felt that was a bit unfair because, um, yeah, obviously a lot of people at the BBC knew about uh, Savile, and obviously a lot of people didn't do enough. Many people in the police, the government, hospitals, the media failed. I think pretty much the only person who came out of that looking good was Johnny Rotten. Um, and uh, yeah, so I felt it was a bit unfair in a way to lay the blame with him. He did actually ask Savile if he was a paedophile in the documentary. And I, Savile gave one of his sort of trademark nonsensical dismissive responses if i remember correctly but i think that was the crack in the windshield the 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 um the news about savile i think was the crack in the windshield for louis and i think he then became i guess fearful of how people would see him he became self-conscious he i think listened too much to other people um i think that was where that began he became um i think he probably thought that people would think that he was a a paedophile or he was implicated in some way because he was part of the BBC and you know he clearly doesn't like the idea that there was a kind of conspiracy or a cover up um, and I think uh, I, I don't know what the motivation for that is um, but I think it's clear that he whilst wanting to accept kind of responsibility for not that I think he needs to for kind of failing to prove somehow in this in this you know generally light-hearted documentary that Savile was a paedophile he also seems to like dismiss the idea that there was a conspiracy um which is odd because well a we know that a lot of people knew and Savile was still like worshipped at the BBC and allowed to do what he wanted in many many organizations not just BBC b he had clear connections to the royal family and obviously a lot of stuff is coming out about them now and see i mean look at what's going on with uh, what's happened with jeffrey epstein and what happened the other day with jean-luc brunel and you know these like suicides and stuff and um it's all just a bit strange uh i'm not saying that there is a conspiracy maybe those people did kill themselves i don't know but obviously it's um it's a bit strange to outright dismiss it um and that could just be because these are his colleagues and the people he works with and he cares about them and he doesn't want to kind of, you know, he he, 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 he doesn't want to believe that, you know, they any of them might be part of this in any way or, or whatever else. I don't know. But yeah, I don't think that's... Um, I, I think what's happened since then is... And I've noticed this. I noticed this a few years ago. I, I went on his Twitter page and he seemed to be... Um, engaging too much with criticism in particular kind of woke criticism of his work of him as a person he seemed afraid he seemed to be kind of intimidated by these people he seemed to feel the need to explain or justify himself he seemed like a lot of people have become over the last few years a lot of adults have become scared of children basically um they've become intimidated by kind of like bullies on twitter by oppressive ideologies and narratives and 
they've allowed that to get in their heads to alter their behavior or their work or their lifestyles and and to control them um and i think that's what he's done i think he's i think he's become fearful i think it's telling that with all the extremism in general in america at the moment and look, maybe there's another documentary to follow but it's odd with how extreme politics have become in america at the moment that he's made a documentary purely focusing on right-wing extremism in america um he's not talking about antifa he's not talking about you know it's it's very odd if that's the case maybe again there's another show to follow i haven't heard anything about that whereas i heard about this documentary long before it came out um it seems for someone for someone of his for someone of of his nature it seems it, or, or or for someone with the track record he has it seems the obvious thing to do you know to focus on both sides he made for example uh, law and order in philadelphia for it was a great documentary he he really tried to show both sides i think he spoke to people on the streets and he tried to understand them and he spoke to the police and he tried to understand them and i think in many of these crime based documentaries he's done he has kind of had a balanced and neutral perspective for the most part and he's trying to dig deeper into these issues but he's not he's not had a kind of um an a, a, a strong ideological bent to it apart from you know when he's been meeting like neo-nazis and stuff obviously it's wrong to be a nazi and like to say these things about people is horrible and that's not really an ideological bent i think that's just being a normal decent human being and when he met for example the westboro baptist church he um he wasn't heavy-handed but again like it was easy enough for him to sort of to to imply or outright say that what they were espousing was wrong without 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 being heavy-handed um in this latest documentary it was very odd. I mean, and prior to this, by the way, there's a long series of things he's put out that I think have been quite substandard. I think his stuff has been quite, like, uninteresting for a while. A lot of the humour is gone. Um, he has become, whilst also, I think, becoming kind of afraid of, like, children on Twitter criticising him, he's also become um, oddly enamoured with himself. And he has got to get through this mugs and, like, T-shirts of himself and he's bought into this kind of weird fandom of him um, that has come about 10 years too late and um, is a sort of... Um, uh, it's a kind of... It's a kind of ironic thing, in a way, you know? And it's a little bit just like... It's like... It, 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 there's a, a tiny hint of it I think that is I wouldn't say mocking him but it's not I, I don't know I think he's kind of bought into it in a, in a in a weird way and he's um he's gotten a bit sucked up in himself in that way and he doesn't want to lose that kind of he obviously knows that people really love him and he doesn't want to lose that and he's become insecure and afraid and um yeah some of his stuff I think has been pretty boring for a while and not uh, not uh, not as um not as funny as weird weekends and not as genuinely inquisitive as the bbc2 specials but anyway this last one yeah i felt was really quite bad um the, the last great one i think he did was the one about alcoholism i thought that was really good um i felt maybe he could have been a bit more detached but anyway yeah i felt that was good uh the, this the one he put out the other day about right wing extremism and the people he's speaking to by the way like straight up top they're nutters like and they're stupid like above all like they're not well in a sense they're you know to have to have garnered the influence they have like they must be smart in some way but their beliefs are not robust they're not well thought out they're not they're not going to hold up to much scrutiny and in this even you could see he was regurgitating narratives from twitter like like um like how it's okay to make fun of white people because traditionally white people have held the power in society which is really odd because well 
uh, it, first of all, holding power in society does not mean that you're that you you can't be oppressed. It's a bit of an odd. I mean, you could look, for example, at Jewish people. If you consider them white, or regardless of what you consider them as, you could say Jewish people have like in modern times hold a lot of power, but also have historically been extremely oppressed and victimized. Um, Irish people don't hold a great deal of power now and have historically been extremely oppressed. Slavic people have historically been extremely oppressed. Um, many, many, many groups of white people have been have not held power and have been oppressed. It's an odd claim to make. It's, it's really um, childish and... Uh, uh, it is in itself an oddly kind of racist way to look at people like you're white therefore you're this well there's a lot of different types of white people and you can't compare you know french and irish and russian and polish and and if you consider jewish people white then jewish people like it's just it's just ridiculous um that was just about the only kind of um attempt at debate that he offered and it was really weird. He seemed, he seemed to have no backbone in this. He seemed, you know, the ordinarily the thing to do in this situation, which as a viewer I was like crying out for him to do, was when this guy says, "I don't think women should be allowed to vote." He should say, "Why?" He didn't even say why. He he had to make it clear that he felt that that was white supremacy and misogyny. He was very keen to use those words frequently, which obviously are very popular terms at the moment. They they they're terms that kind of. Um, uh, supersede in a lot of people's eyes the importance of actual discussion and trying to understand someone's opinion and trying to like debate it and it's just a label that you put on someone and often it's correct like I'm not saying it's incorrect but it's just it doesn't have much value it doesn't have much real world value it's kind of useless right like it's not w what does that really do um, and it, it also can become very watered down it has now become very watered down like all of those terms like like misogyny is a is a bad thing and white supremacy is a bad thing, but those terms are thrown around so freely that it's hard to care about them, really, like, because they're just so, you know, it's become just name-calling, basically, and that's was the extent of his journalism in this documentary was basically name-calling, was going to these people, letting them talk a bit, and then calling them names. Um, you don't have to do that. It's way too on the nose. It's pandering to a... a, a kind of immature audience who are like clapping like seals presumably or at least in his mind would be at him saying you're a white supremacist you're a misogynist you're racist or whatever the much smarter thing to do is to be inquisitive and to ask questions and to draw these things out of people and to let the audience make up their own mind you don't need to you know put such a fine point on it when you say to someone and i, I was really curious to know i mean this guy he seemed he seemed self-conscious about saying women shouldn't be allowed to vote. He was laughing. He was like, I mean, this guy's like 22 as well. I mean, I don't, you know, he's, he's pretty young to be having this level of attention. And, and I don't know. Uh, it, it, um, but he, uh, he, 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 he didn't, yeah. I don't think it's hard to, to, through that line of inquiry to kind of expose the idea that thinking women shouldn't be allowed to vote is pretty ridiculous but you have to at least give it the time of day you have to it, it's this thing of not allowing people to discuss like dangerous ideas i don't think that's a dangerous idea because it's never going to take hold because it's fucking stupid like the idea that women shouldn't have jobs is fucking stupid like it's it's crazy and you don't you don't have uh, it's not upsetting to talk to somebody who thinks that because it's just like it's, it's such a minority belief it's so uh, it's held by so few people in this day and age it's not any threat to society really and if you want to present it as such at the very least you have to like present it as it is you know as i said like why and i was really curious to know because i know there's no way against someone who is relatively smart like louis Ferru, there's no way this guy would be able to defend that belief um so i don't know what he was afraid of 
that guy saying. I don't know what he was afraid of him. He seemed afraid to get into a, it. It wouldn't even be a debate because I don't think that's the point of his show. But he seemed afraid to even inquire uh, in a in a kind of debatey way as to the beliefs of these guys who are like twenty or twenty two or twenty five. He seemed afraid, and if you know what you stand for and you know what you're doing there and you know what the show is about and you know what you believe and you know that this stuff is wrong, why would you be afraid? Why would you be uncomfortable? He's afraid because he's not doing this of his own of his own accord. He's doing this because he knows that it's what is expected of him. Maybe the BBC have asked him to make this documentary. Um, there's been a clear push in recent years and BBC they, they've been looking for Louis Ferru alternatives and all I'll say is that demographically they are they are different to Louis Ferru and obviously the BBC have a lot of kind of um, socio-political agendas and uh, to some people the idea of somebody like Louis Ferru even it, just being as established as he is is almost offensive almost in fact it is offensive it's not almost offensive to many people just his face is offensive to some people um, and I wonder if this is some form of appeasement, like it's like you can stay on TV and keep doing your shows, but we need you sometimes to do something like this that shows that you're like one of us, you're on the kind of right side of things and you're, you know, against white supremacy and bigotry and, um, I don't know. I, I will obviously like, um, uh, be completely wrong if it turns out he is doing one on the extreme left, but I mean, there's a lot to investigate there. Like, it just seems so odd because on both sides you have the same thing. Like, people of all ages, but also definitely like young people, like, maybe not specifically, but notably on both sides getting involved in like very extreme political action and discourse. I do think there is more of it on the left, and I do think most of it is initiated by the left, but it cannot be denied that there's a huge amount on both sides and it's pretty uh, toxic and dangerous and unpleasant. It's creating a bad atmosphere. Um, and I don't see why you wouldn't, you know, it, it, why you wouldn't investigate both because you can see, like, <sighs> any kind of extremism really is dangerous. Like, like it's... It's a topic in and of itself. It's it to some degree. It's irrelevant what kind of extremism it is. It's just the extreme nature of it that makes it dangerous. So that is an interesting topic for a documentary. Um, yeah, in the past he didn't interview both sides necessarily, but there weren't really both sides in the past. Like when he met <coughs> when he made his other series about. Um, neo-Nazis years ago, there wasn't this weird back and forth, left and right thing. And neo-Nazis were a very fringe group who everybody on planet Earth pretty much found disgusting and thought they were weird racist freaks. And there wasn't really a kind of like a kind of back and forth between two groups. And they were also outwardly, openly neo-Nazis. I mean, they were drawing swastikas and stuff. And they were like, you know, um, to be fair, some of these guys were doing Hitler salutes. But it wasn't, extremism wasn't a, a general issue, and he's basically allowed people to convince him that extremism is something that exists purely on the right, and that he has to make a documentary about it, or he's somehow neglecting his kind of duties, and there's been a lot of interesting political things he could have made documentaries about over recent years. Maybe they refused to allow him to make one about left-wing extremism. I don't know. Um, but yeah, to me it seemed odd and it, given his recent trajectory it seemed quite predictable and it was very disappointing to see that his only kind of offerings in terms of like pushing against these ideas or, or really further exploring them was to say white people hold power and therefore it's okay to say things about bad things about them but it's not okay to say bad things about other groups. Um, that, for a man of his age to say is incredibly sad and that's um those are the words of someone who's not really thinking they're they're feeling and i suspect that what he's feeling is is fear basically and that's why his documentaries have not been very good for a while 
Um, and I'm not sure there will be any time in the near future unless he kind of gets off Twitter and stops letting like kids tell him what to do, basically. <laughs>